All right. Oh my gosh. It's uh, why am I always rushing to start? Hey, hey, y'all, oh, hey. Oh my gosh. It's been a minute since I have gone live. Let's get the lighting right. No. Is that okay? It's okay. Um, it's been a minute since I've gone live, and I'm have been enjoying um, my summer. Oh, the Seattle weather has been really good. So I've been enjoying that. Just spending time with my family and working on some other stuff. Um, it's been good. But I'm really, ooh, how's this lighting? Why am I playing with the lighting? Um, that's okay. Uh, I, I'm excited. Hey, Ariel. Hey, Dewey. I'm excited today because I am going to be talking with my brother. Yes. And it's Friday. Feel good Friday. He's here. Just request it. So let me bring him in. All right. I just ate y'all. Maybe that was not a good choice to eat right before. Okay, connecting. <gasps> Whoa, oh. What's up? What's I up? I can't. You you just come on the screen all camera ready. And I can't. What you, I guess. I just came back from the store. <laughs> Where'd you go? Trader Joe's? No, I had to I went to get a little juicy thing. You and range. these juices. Okay, Gotta keep it together. That? And this posse is showing up. <laughs> what? What'd you all say? The pink, I said all the pink posse is showing up. Pink yeah. posse, come on. Everybody, come on, this is my girl. You. This is my girl, uh, Deidre. And uh, I'm talking to her. We all, all the, the Seattle connection. All of the artists. This is the artist of color in Seattle, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Artist of color, Seattle. Yeah. What up, what up, what up? What's up? So I want you, for people who don't know, tell them your <laughs> name. I like to do pronouns and tell us what kind of artist you are. Like what First kind of, of artist all, you I love that you said let's do pronouns. Come on, black woman, doing pronouns. <laughs> um, I go by he and him. Evan, by the way, what's up? Um, and um. I go by he and him. Uh, I am Nico. I am Nathaniel Nico Anand. Uh, my father is from Ghana and living in Detroit, just like I was, where I was born and raised, and I spent most of my days with you. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I'm an all-around artist. It's funny. Everyone is getting to know Uncle Clifford, and at the same time, they're getting to know Nico as well, you know, uh, I've been a gay black man all my life. You know, well, not all my life. Before that, I was a gay black boy. Um, and, then, <laughs> and 
And um, I just had a whole journey of acting and dance. You know, I started this whole thing out wanting to be inspired by Leroy from Fame. So that that was that was. <laughs> Let's big Fame. up Leroy. Yes, Gene Anthony Ray. That's yes. my dog. So um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. It's so yeah. funny. People uh, have been doing a lot of talk about Nelson Ellis and uh-huh. Uncle Cliver. You know, Nelson Ellis's character from True Blood. Um, yes. Lafayette. Yes. And my character uh, in P-Valley, um, Uncle Clifford. And that's such a huge compliment. It's so funny. I feel like sometimes people are like trying to pit them against each other. But it's like, no, they're, they're different, but they exist in the ether. And, and this is a really, really, really beautiful moment, to be honest, because I realized, I'm going to tell you, Deidre, the thing that I realized that was like, oh, something that's really changed. I'm not that same kind of artist of, oh, I'm, str- I'm trying to make it, trying to make it. Yeah. That was when, it wasn't when I got the show. It wasn't when the show started airing and you got to see and all this stuff. It literally was when... I was doing the play in New York earlier this spring. It was doing the yep, Hot Wings. King. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was doing that before COVID came and, you know, shut Broadway down. But I was like, oh, my God, I, I originated the role, Big Charles. And I was like, yo, they're going to be people that can use this material for their auditions or for their consortium uh, showcases in uh, conservatory programs or auditioning for different movies and stuff like that. I was like, oh, they can use this character that I created. Yo, God, thank you. That was, it's just, it was just such a blessing. That was the thing that was like, yo, man, you made it. Like you making a difference. So, yeah. You've been making a difference. It's just, I think now more people can see it and witness it and are part of the journey. I think we sell ourselves short when we, uh, before mainstream media gets wind of all the greatness that we're doing, mm-hmm. it's like we feel like, oh, what are we doing? But let me tell you, boo, you've been doing it, okay? <laughs> thank okay. you, thank you. Look, before I came up here, Michael, my husband, Michael, was like, tell Nico, I said, he got to spill the tea. Yeah. So, what does Michael know about the tea, Lord? He's talking he's- about the show. <laughs> You know, because that's our Sunday night, literally. That's All our right. Sunday ritual. We Have watch you got it. on the poll for him? Look, I want to get one. I need a class. Everybody, you can get yourself a portable poll. It will do wonders for your life and for your body. I... Pole dancing on that body, it gets it all right. Well, look, the first time I went to a strip club back in the day when I lived in New York, mm-hmm. and I saw someone on the pole, it was in that moment, I was like, this is artistry. Mm-hmm. I was like, this person is an athlete. There was no, the things that she or they did with their body mm-hmm. was amazing. And yeah. I have had total respect ever since. Yeah. Look, that upper body strength is no joke. You think it's the upper body strength? I think a lot of it is the lower body. The upper body for sure, but the lower body, you know, to lift those legs, especially with the loose side heels, those platforms are kind of heavy. So that's adding another 10 pounds to your legs and the the gravity and swinging it all around, you know. Can we Maybe y'all will get to see Uncle Clifford on the pole one day, one day. They one don't day. know. I didn't see you. They don't know. <laughs> see, look, my mom, I was on the phone with my mama, and she's like, the core. Nico, when he fell out and put that leg up, she knew. <laughs> I was like, see, that's that dancer. People who don't know Nico know. He threw that leg up, and I'm like, I see you acting out. I see you acting out and acting up. The thing about it is Uncle Clifford is a dancer, a former dancer as well. That's how dance and, and shake joint came about, even with the, the whole conversation with his grandmother, you know, Miss mm-hmm. Loretta Devine, who y'all met last week. Um, but that leg, that leg was in episode two, if you guys were paying attention. Where was the leg? If I told you... It wouldn't be that much fun, you know. Okay, we'll just go back and watch. It's a little evening tease. Look for the Mm -hmm. leg. Follow the leg. I was was about to be real ratchet and give you a leg real quick right now. I was sort of like, but I was like, no, these these jeans ain't going to allow that to happen. (laughs) (laughs) Tell, Uh, you know, 
I don't know if some people realize that P Valley was a play that Katori wrote before it became adapted to a um, TV show. And can you talk a little bit about what that journey was like when you did the show, where you did it? I know you were in Minnesota. And just kind of talk about that process. I can, but can I ask you a question first? Yes. I'm seeing all of these comments and things like that. Am I not supposed to answer them for you? <laughs> you can. Yes. If y'all want to ask a question, go ahead. I only ask that because it was, um, oh, we need to play ASP. Oh, you can't get to play Evan. Evan, by the way, you can't get to play. Uh, the, the writer, Katori Hall, has it. Ooh, 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 all these hearts. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> she has <laughs> she has to play locked up in a vault. But um, we did this play. It started off as a play literally 10 years ago. In 2009 was when I first read the first four pages of it. Um, and I've told that story time and time again, so I know y'all heard that if you've been following. Um, but to fast forward, when we did the production, it was in 2015, 2015. I had just left New York in 2013 and moved out to Los Angeles. It was like, you know, all right, I'm a transition from Broadway to, you know, TV and film. I'm going to get this going. And I came out here. Life said, nope. And have, you, have, <laughs> you have some things, Nico, that you have to take care of. And uh, I took care of those things, and I sat my ass down, and I got a job working at a hotel overnight. And in the yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it was so funny. Well, that's the, the whole artist part of it, you know, uh, how do you maintain your, your strength and your vision? That's real. Um, yeah. And for me, that came from actively affirming, you know, and being quiet. I, I, mm. I always say there are things that I believe God says to you that are for you, and it's not necessarily for everybody else. So everyone that's seen these, um, uh, what do you call the things, the releases or the, the announcements, the announcements that they put in, like, you know, in the magazines and all this yeah. stuff, that's nothing but just God's confirmation for me. That's the way yeah. I experience it. And I know that's not, it's not for everybody, but that's just for me. So yeah. um, I literally was working at the Marriott Hotel and I got this job uh, for the play. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't move to New um, LA to do another play. Ah, it's supposed to be something else. And, and, and then I was like, mm, should I do it? And I thought about it. And the answer was absolutely yes. I, hey, Stefan. Look, I was like, who's Stefan? Let me see, let me see this little icon. Yes, CC. Stefan. Stefan, come on. Oh, Stefan, got it. Sorry, Stephen. sorry, sorry. Stephen. Stephen. Mm -hmm. Listen, my life. Sorry, my bad. Um, but yes. So anyway, it was literally a twenty-three dollar difference. <laughs> a twenty-three dollar difference from the hotel. From the hotel life. to the play, it was literally twenty-three dollars. But I had, we had done workshops and things of the play in New York, the Hip Hop Theater Festival. They did the play originally just with straight actors, the workshop of it. We did it with mm -hmm. actual pole dancers because a lot of producers was like, oh, it's not going to work, you know. Um, but Katori was very adamant in that this is a play about these people who happen to work in a strip club, you know, yeah. um, and that the dance is a part of the story. But what is most paramount is the heart of these people so um we landed in a place where the actors could get training you know the actors definitely had to have facility and, and ability but it was more so about you know you can train and we have to legally have stunt doubles anyway you know uh for certain things so that's how it kind of worked out so i left in 2015 and did the play at mixed blood theater um in minneapolis and that's where we did it. And because I just knew, I knew that if I did not go all the way, because we had, like I said, all these productions, but I had not had the lights, the sound, right. the actual let's go, you know, mm -hmm. of it all. And I just, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't live all through Uncle Clifford's skin. And I, and I had let someone else step into her shoes. So, yeah. That was the, it's that, amazing. That. And you, I tell people, and I've 
you know, before P Ain't Valley. No <laughs> that's right. Before P Valley aired, you know, I said to a few um, theater friends up here, I was like, you never know. Like, we're on this journey and we're doing plays, and, you know, lots of people have aspirations to do film and television also. But I'm like, you never know where this journey that you're in right now is going to take you. And, you know, you always have to just go in and give it 155% because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. it's you just you never know. Like, even the people that you work with, there are That's people true. that I have taught that were my students, you know what I'm saying, that are working, you know. Uh, and they're like, oh, well, what are you doing here? And I'm like, you know I taught you, right? So if I taught you, <laughs> you should know why I'm here. Go get brand new. But it's okay. Everybody, everybody handles their things in different ways, and they come back around. They come back around. How, what's your how your mama doing? Wait, it's just like these little questions. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, we have questions. I didn't know you could do this. Okay, I ask yeah. you this. All right. It Go says, "Our Uncle Clifford pronouns she and her." Talk yes. about that if you can. Yes, uh, Uncle Clifford definitely. First of all, Uncle Clifford is non-binary, so Uncle Clifford flows however she feels the flow um, and she does identify with the pronouns of she and her and that is about come on yes <laughs> and um, I think that that it's so beautiful to be a part of this time you know mm -hmm. I myself am I identify as a gay man um, and there's so many brothers and sisters in my community that identify of whether it's they, or whether it's she and her, or whether it's he and him. But I think the moment that people, that moment of hesitation before they speak, I think that that's magic. I think mm. that that's magic. Some people think that they're messing up, but I think that that's magic because you're being considerate of that person. You are taking the time to, to honor how do you want to be addressed? It is literally yes. just that simple. It is literally just that simple, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that that, a pronoun, not even the noun, the pronoun mm -hmm. is a, it's expanding the space of how we can literally just treat one another. So that's, exactly. how, I, that's how I think. And about. how we show up for one another and share love for each other. Because I think when, you know, I got introduced to other pronouns besides she, her, maybe a few years ago. And I was mm -hmm. curious. I was like, oh, yeah. teach me about this. I don't yeah. know. And then I learned, I said, you know what? Hell yeah. I mean, why not? We have to I think people are afraid to learn new things and to grow and evolve because they're afraid of change. Mm -hmm. But using someone's proper pronouns has nothing to do with you. So let <laughs> that go. It's not That's about right. you. You have yeah. to let that go and respect and honor people for how they want to be addressed. Yeah. Uncle oh, Clifford is bully a bully boy. Oh, wait, That's bully boy. Right. This, this, uh, this pick right here. All right, bully boy. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, let me scroll up past that. <laughs> no, I think it's, for me, it's no different from like when, you know, some females, they'll tell you, if you're like, oh, bitch, what's going on? And they're like, don't call me bitch. Right. I don't like that. I don't like that. You know, I think it's it's literally just that simple. That could be a part of your language and your vernacular, how you speak. But if your friend, your homegirl, or someone that you just met is saying, like, I don't like when you call me bitch. I don't care if you're gay. You know? It's right. just like, for me, as a gay man, I don't like when women or, or anyone says, hey, sis, or hey, girl. I be like, ain't no girl here. Ain't not right. man but a girl here. This is all man. So right. what? And I'm from Detroit, so really, please don't get yourself messed up and confused. I don't care how how high my leg goes, okay? And I don't care how many spins I do. Be clear. We are mm. from the deep, okay? So everybody, I'll give you a little background and context of how I know Nico. And if you hear me call him Nate, is because we go way back, and sometimes I call him Nate. We met, I was a ninth grader coming into Cass Tech High School and we did a show together. That's high school, that's Diana Ross. <laughs> yes, Diana Ross, Big Sean. Hey, Goldie, what's up? So Detroit is in the house. So we did a show directed by our mentor and longtime all, the all, 
Marilyn McCormick, Tony Award winning educator. Yeah. Dream Girls. And I will never forget, I was just a little kind of like ninth grader coming in, not sure if I was going to really do performing arts because I was like, I don't want to be a performing arts. I'm not sure. And I did that show. And let me tell you, when I met Nico, it was like we knew each other for 20 years. I mean, we young <laughs> teenagers. And that was it. That was yeah. it. I was choreographing that play. Yeah. Yes. I know. And I was a stepsister. Mm -hmm. So I still remember some of What was your song? Well, let me say, what was it? I'm looking for something, baby. Something that'll give me a rise. Look, I got it. That was, I'm looking for something. Oh, yeah. I got to see this neck. This neck was going side to side like so. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now give me more yes. side to side as opposed to around. You want to say? Okay, I'm look, looking okay, for now, something, I'm, baby. This is it was, the lesson. It was one, two. Looking for something, baby. Looking for the give me a rise. Boom. I'm looking for something. Hey, hey. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but but no. remember that it started off lock, lock. Like, I'm, why am I saying that to you like you about to go do it? But go ahead. Yes, that is where we started. <laughs> Saginaw we started. is in the house. <laughs> All the shows we did. Runaways. My favorite you know, probably was once on this island that you choreographed. Yeah, you were cute. Y'all, look, I'm telling y'all, Nico was in what they would call dance workshop, which is part of the dance uh, troupe at the school. And they would have these concerts where the students could choreograph. And I will never forget, you choreographed this dance called the Pearl, or using the one I didn't do the Pearl. Yes, that you was, did. That, I did not do the Pearl. That was Kashina. That was Tashina, not Tashina. With the, with, the, with the balls? The ball. That wasn't me. <laughs> I'm you glad that it's... You did the Donny Hathaway. You did yeah. the Donny Hathaway. Giving up. Giving up. Yeah. I'm telling you. Memorable. Right, a little, little thing. Alabama okay, is we in have, the house. We you have, have another question over there? questions. Uh, um, how do you feel about people. being called Uncle Clifford? How do I feel about being called Uncle Clifford? Like... When I'm on, on the street, I guess that's what... Yeah, maybe like. that's the question. Well, the best part about that is that we have been in quarantine, so that ain't happened. So. <laughs> um, but I will tell you, um, even when we were on set, um, I always ask people, like, if they were like, oh, hey... Even like my castmates, if they were, if we were taking a picture or something like that, like I posted a mm -hmm. picture for Ella Rico's birthday, today is her birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and like when we take a picture or what have you, I always ask people, who do you, who are you asking to take a picture with? Uncle Clifford or Nico? Because for me, it is, it's very different, you know? Yes. Um, yes, we both love. Yes, we both black. Yes, we both have male genitalia. Yes, <laughs> you, you know, we both do. We both chocolate. But... Uh, we, we are different and for me just as an artist that's a part of my sanity so yeah I mean I'm I, ex I expect people to meet me with the love and respect that I give off so however that makes you feel in the moment I'm not gonna crucify or not ignore someone if they be like Uncle Clifford Uncle Clifford you know well somebody called you Uncle Clifford when we were on a, a group call and it was weird for me <laughs> the desk was like Uncle Clever. I'm like, no, oh. it's Nick. It's yeah. Nico. Like, yeah. But you know, I'll get with it because I told somebody. I said, look, this star is rising because we even we we even in quarantine. And I said, could you imagine if we weren't in quarantine? No. The, look, no. it's kind of nice. I think it's kind of nice for you in a in a sense because you can experience this all to yourself and have your own experience of everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. without the extra <clears throat> hype of so much media. Like, there's already so much media attention mm -hmm. just being at home. But, like, imagine you're like, okay, I'm ready for the red carpets. You know, I carpet. believe, I really believe that this has all been just so divine for something to be, have started from literally reading four pages in a, in a reading. And we were literally, like, in a salon, yeah, like, her house along like it was wow. old school like Zora Neale Hurston James Baldwin like just it was a bunch of writers that would get together and just wanted some black artists to come over to lend their voices because they didn't have access people who didn't have access 
to black voices as uh, for actors and, and writers that had certain things that they wanted to get across, but they didn't have the, the people to do so. So we, it, was a, it was what we call Black Mondays because the theater is usually dark on Mondays and closed, there's usually no shows. So that was the night that Katori wanted to read these pages of P Valley, which was at the time called Pussy Valley, which is an old housing development um, neighborhood in Memphis. Pussy Valley is a real place, uh, used to be a real place, a real housing development, but it has since been torn down, you know, with gentrification and all that stuff, you know, like they're trying to do to the paint. They did that to Pussy Valley. Um, and so, it was just, when I learned all about the world, you know, that yeah. why they called it Pussy Valley and, and the single mothers, the single black mothers that were raising children there. And then all of, all just the whole institution that the city itself had put in, into it. It led me down a path of understanding more of Southern culture. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not that different from Detroit. You know, when you come from a town you get to know how it moves. You know how the people think. You know what's popping in the city. You you know all of that culture. So getting to know that about the South was really important. And you know, I didn't. I remember I didn't realize that Memphis and Jackson, like Mississippi and, and Tennessee, they're they they like this. Yeah. Like Detroit to Southfield. When we go from six mile going down to eight mile on North Carolina, right. and it's like, oh, all of a sudden we're in Southfield, but in our yeah. mind we're still in Detroit. You know, Memphis and uh, Tennessee, uh, the Bible Belt, it was all like that. So in the terms of the story of P-Valley, that 55, I-55, the highway, that connects these three states together. And that's how people, so many people have access to come to my club as Uncle Clifford to come down to the paint. You know, so mm -hmm. that's why it gets on and popping on like Sunday nights with Mercedes. And then when uh, Mississippi is taken over and stuff like that. And then you'll see what happens, you know, on murder night. Look, people are mad about this little break in not being able to see a show this mm -hmm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't realize that till today. So Michael was <laughs> like, yeah, remember we watching this like next? I said, what? It's not coming on? It's not. Well, there is, it is coming on. You have a marathon. There's a marathon yes. that's happening so that everyone can get caught up. And I say that that's a good thing because You've been able to sit with the characters for a minute now, you yes. know? So many people I love, they were like, um, I'm sick of, what's her name? Uh, Haley, uh, Autumn, or, or Lakeisha Savage, or whatever her name is. Everybody will always say like, one, two, three, or whatever her name is, you know? But like now that they are, they are liking her um, uh, and understanding a little bit more of her, her backstory, yes. I... I think that this is a time, in all honesty, it's a time for you to rewatch, to go back. And if you watch the show again from the beginning, so much is going to make more sense to you. So much. And you're going to pick up on little things that you didn't see before. You didn't see I think before. It also, you know, just um, reiterates the brilliance of Katori's writing and how she revealed that character. Because I was there too. I'm like, oh my gosh, this girl's getting on my nerves, you know? And then I'm like, oh, okay. There's mm -hmm. more, pray tell. Like I mm -hmm. wanted to be drawn in and that's mm -hmm. what good writing does. Yeah. And I'm so, I am, I'm also here for this moment of black female playwrights turned uh, television writers, mm -hmm. EP, showrunners. I'm like, Let's do it. So, Katori, I act too. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm standing right. in the background. Uncle Clifford needs somebody to hold that parasol one time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are picked up for season two. Yes. Are you, Onika? Onika? Yes, we are picked up for season two. And thank you guys for about the character development. I saw that. I am sinking. It is um, a little sign. You'll be all right. Um, I think Deidre, in terms of like the, the character development, I think it's one of the things that I'm experiencing. Sometimes we, as a community, whether whether you are black, brown, whether you are gay or straight, whether you are coming from a marginalized community, I think that when people typically have been consuming black content or content that in 
encompasses black story. It's very thin. It's almost like those wafer cookies. You know, everybody knows it's a wafer cookie. It's not bad. You know, it, it'll tide you over. You know, it'll hold you over. It'll, it'll, it'll curve that sweet tooth. But it's not going to give you that good Mrs. Fields cookie. It's not going to give you that famous Amos peanut butter chocolate chip with walnut cookie. You know, those, something that's right. decadent. And I feel like this right here is, is dense material. And it's a little bit, it's much more than we are accustomed. We audiences, whether you are black, white, Asian, Latin, what have you. I think that you, it is a different opportunity for people to see our stories, to yes. feel the merit of them, to, to, um, to understand that we are not a joke, to understand, hey, they laughing and singing just like my auntie do. Because we can't pretend that like sometimes black folks don't just don't break out into a song just because. Look, I do it every day. Okay, do you understand what I mean? That, yes. And guess what? White people do that too. Yeah. Latin people you know, do that it, too. And, and part of the beauty of the show is as black people, we are witnessing and being, it's, we're allowed to appreciate a part of our culture that for so long we've been show we've been told that it's not good to appreciate. Yeah. You know, we're like, oh no, oh you a stripper, oh you know. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, in our communities, people are thriving, putting themselves yeah. through school. Starting you know, what else is crazy. I I've heard so many people talk to me since the show has come out. I was like, oh, that's what it's like in a strip club. I'm like, you've never been to a strip club. A lot of people have actually never been to a strip club, let alone a black strip club, to even understand the athleticism that these women are doing, to even understand the brilliance and the business mind of that DJ, to even understand yes. what's really going on, that, you know, the, the economic structure that's within this strip club. And now it's like, I ask the question, well, what were you judging? If you ain't know none of this, what was you judging? You was mad. You was mad that she knew how to move them cheeks. You Look. was mad. You was mad that she knew how to keep that man or get that girl. You was mad. It's okay. Well, you know, it's all about judgment and and you know we live in a society that's very puritanical, and mm -hmm. you know a lot of us have been raised to think that you know you are you. You're supposed to carry yourself in a certain way. This is how you show respect for your body, not showing your body. And we're in a whole new uh, time period right now where this generation is embracing who they are and mm -hmm. in all forms, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how we look and we're taking ownership and we're deciding how people should view us, not the yeah. other way around. Yeah. That's like for me, it was very important that Uncle Clifford was thick. You know, baby, look, yeah. I, I just tell y'all the first episode when yeah. you had your clothes off and I seen your booty. I you don't have to talk about this. First of all, I don't have a booty, I don't have a booty. Okay, look, I'm that, just saying, ass. I was like, okay. that's an ass, that's an ass. <laughs> Listen, you know, look. what as y'all are getting to know me, Nico, I'm a real mofo. I'm very real and very blunt with it. So that's what it is. Yes, come on, Uncle Clifford. Oh, Cece is, is on here. Who? Cece. Thicker than a snicker. Yes. All they asked me that in the audition. Uh-huh. Wait, like, you had to take your clothes off in the audition? You know, what kind of world do you think this is? I can't even hear my dog thing? is barking. Oh, got you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not have to take my clothes off in the audition. I know. But they did ask. They did ask, you know, how I felt about nudity. Um, and uh, one of the producers, she asked me that, and I turned the question back on her. This was during my screen test. I said, well, let me ask you a question. It was really hot, Deidre. I had a can of Sprite. I was, I can't, I was in, Uncle Clifford was there. It wasn't Nico. I was, so, I don't know who the hell I thought I was, but I was sipping on my can of, my, <laughs> my can of Sprite with a straw because I had, I was fully done. I yeah. was fully done. Actually, the picture that you guys see at the check cashing place in episode one, yeah, that, that's the real picture from my audition. 
<laughs> yep. 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 Um, and so the I had... picture on the mantle is you as a kid. If people didn't know that that yes. picture is actually you. Yeah, that little boy in the green. That's yes. me. That's me. Uh, but she asked, so, you know, this is a, a show about stripping, you know. How do you feel about, you know, nudity and, 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 and all of that? And I sipped on my, my Sprite, not being shady or anything. I literally was thirsty because <laughs> I had been in there for a while. And mm -hmm. I said, well, let me ask you the question. I said, when was the last time you saw a full-figured woman or man being made love to on the screen? I looked at them. There was silence. And I said, so if I'm the vessel, so be it. I threw my hand up, and I walked out the room. So, yeah. You got the part in that moment. They were like, okay, so, um... <laughs> That's going to be a yes from all of us. <laughs> it was really about that moment. That moment was so pivotal to me because it's so rare that you get to see people stripped down and especially yeah. someone like Uncle Clifford, you know, in terms of not sexuality or anything like that, but just a large character, you know, yes. and to be able to see that character stripped down and to still see the character. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was very, it was important for me to for people to understand that Uncle Clifford was not a joke. This was not a show. This was not for anybody. Uncle Clifford, in fact, when go when when she goes to the check cashing, mm -hmm. that's when she's putting on a show. Yes, because you have to because, the nails mm -hmm. off. The nails, yes. let me tell you, those nails were such Oh my God, it was so painful. It was so, so painful to take off. Not because the nails themselves were painful, it was the psychology behind it. Mm. It was the psychology behind it because a little insight, because I know we have a lot of theater people on the line. When I did the play in Minneapolis, I did not have nails. There are lines that were in the play about having nails, the character having nails, and uh, people, other characters commented on it but I did not have nails. But that is where uh, I would think, you know, people are talking about this pointing, <laughs> Uncle Clifford's pointing and things like that. That's where that kind of stuff kind of developed because it was about the articulation of the hands. Um, and I moved and being a dancer, just dance. I'm, the body is just communicating. But I, I, I didn't have nails because I wasn't gonna be safe. Nico wasn't gonna be safe. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they did not have a way for me to be able to take my nails on and off after the show or put them on right before. It would have to be done. And then I would have to wear them for two weeks, you know, go back, get a refill. Like, you know, and I did not want to do that in my real life. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what that taught me, excuse me, what that taught me was the outside pressures that come in for Uncle Clifford and for people mm -hmm. like her. Mm -hmm. To be able to walk in your truth like that, you have to be aware that there are people that want to do harm, not because of anything that you've done, but maybe because of their fear, maybe because of their confusion. Yes. So many different reasons. You know, you can't put pinpoint into one thing, but as an actor, I knew I was like, I got to get on the subway and get back home. And the at the show was two two hours and forty minutes or something like that with the intermission. So I wasn't trying to ride no train at eleven thirty at night, halfway sleep, you know what I'm saying, with rhinestones on my hand, you know what I'm saying? I had the yeah. whole beard situation. The beard stuff was yes, the bravery of trans women. Absolutely, CC. That's right. Absolutely. And yeah. people who have a trans experience or a non binary experience. It yes. is really you say like, Well, I don't know what that's like. Everybody on this on this doggone live right now has had something where you were walking home from school, even as a kid. You were walking home from school and you saw the the group of these boys over here or, or some other mischief going on and you're like, let me cross the street. Mm -hmm. Or you come in from a store in the shopping mall parking lot and you're seeing some activity that may be near your car. So you go back inside or you look at the flowers outside the supermarket for a little while. You linger a little bit to let them pass. Those are the kinds of things that people on the LGBT spectrum that they deal with every day. It's ingrained. The things that you kind of grow out of, like, oh, I'm bigger now. I'm not that same kid that you can bully. People like baby Uncle Clifford don't get to do that. <laughs> they just like, but this is me. 
you know, this is me, you know. You know, my hope too is that, you know, with people watching the show, it'll raise awareness about our trans family mm -hmm. and how, you know, people love Uncle Clifford. And I'm like, great. Then we, right. you can't just love Uncle Clifford. That's right. And not show Talk up for our trans community also. Because mm -hmm. it's more than just a TV Clifford. show. That's right. You can't love Uncle Clifford and not love your own son. Hey. You look. can't love Uncle Clifford and talk about this show, and then you looking at your niece crazy, right? It's not about, oh, I'm going to shun you because you're doing X, Y, or Z. Get to the reason why they're doing that, right? Whether that is you being present in their life, them needing uh, another kind of fulfillment, them be needing to be encouraged and fed to get to another decision or choice. Uncle Clifford's first rule, first rule that she taught Mercedes, and every Every person is, because it's not just women, every person that's in that club is don't let the stage be your, let the stage be your stepping stone, mm -hmm. not your time stone. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not a thing that's going to bury you. There is a specific reason why DJ Never Scared is still in high school. You know what I'm saying? Running up, running the strip club. He ain't even old enough to drink, you no. know. <laughs> but I love he is up in there. Too. Me too. Yeah. Daquan. That's my Daquan. Brandon, he does a great job. It's, yeah. it, 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 he reminds me a lot of me when I was young. You know, just like so much energy and it's like this opportunity, it's just everything, you know, but I loved having even a 16 year old running the music of the club because kids know music. Young people know music, they know what's hot, they know what's popping. Yeah. And when you, when you have an opportunity in the South or in any neighborhood, because I'm not even going to just limit it to the South where the show is, takes place but in any neighborhood, when you see a kid that has promise, that has potential, you want to nurture that. So Uncle Clifford yeah. is like, no, you coming and you're going to work in a club because I know your mama, your mama, she used to do my nails or whatever, da, 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 right. you know, right. and you're going to stay out of trouble, you know. That's why when, it, I don't, I'm assuming everybody has got at least the episode three, but when he's late coming to the club and Lil Murder is dropping him off, Uncle Clifford walking to the car thinking he's seeing <laughs> that Uncle Clifford walking to the car thinking she's seeing um Daquan's mom or auntie right. or something like, well, where'd you get oh wait, uh oh that ain't <laughs> that ain't Look, your mama. <laughs> when Lil Murder came over for dinner and he was uh he was Kiki and with grandma, mm -hmm. I I was like, Yes, the progression of his character in your relationship. Yeah. together has been so fun and so great to watch like that moment of vulnerability when you know after the first time you guys slept together and you were looking at him lying there and then went to mm -hmm. the mirror and looked at your body I just said oh like and then <laughs> putting the mask on like the person who you know he desire of one and then going back I was like oh if this ain't some <laughs> yeah yeah that 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 part I, I I like to watch the reviews I like to watch the reviews and, yeah. and listen to people's comments and that moment some people were like oh Uncle Clifford is ashamed of her body and only comfortable in a wig and I was like no hmm. I mean I could see I can see how people could interpret it that way Mm -hmm. But I also encourage people as they're watching that, yes, we are watching through the lens of our own experience. Everybody is seeing this, experiencing this show through their own experience, whether it's having a child that's of a, uh, a non-binary or trans experience, or mm -hmm. I used to dance in a club myself, or I like going to strip clubs or whatever, right. whatever, that, you know, they, they, you're going to put that on it. But for yeah. me, as Uncle Clifford, in that moment, Uncle Clifford wasn't even looking at her body. Uncle Clifford was still looking at that mofo in the mirror, like laying there on, on my couch, like, ooh, what happened? That's what it looked like to me. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Because oftentimes, and even as, even, listen, even as a gay man, and I hear my friends, my black sisters say this, that are heterosexual, sometimes it's hard to be loved. People can think you're so attractive. And you. I had a man tell me one time, I, anybody who knows me knows I've said this. But he said to me, he was like, Nico, I would never date you. And I was like, why? He was like, because you look like you got it all. It looked like, you know. And I was like, 
Huh? They was like, you look like you know, you like you got a husband already, like back at home, and like y'all happy, blah 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 blah. And I was like, so you only attracted to people who are broken. You like mm. you have my favor. Huh? Mm. Got it. That's not me. You know. Right. Now look, I got some. I'm. We all got little holes and pockets that we fixing. Cause I ain't perfect. I'm uh, far from perfect. You know what I mean? But just cause you try to keep your shit together don't mean that you, you know, ain't on the market. So but anyway. A good comment that said, I want to see Uncle Clifford in Vogue. They want to see you in Vogue. I want to see him, you in Vogue too. I, I'm not mad at that. But you know, I think you should write to the editor. I'm not mad at that. Paint possibly. Let's right. do it. Let's, Let's start a letter writing know. campaign. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I know. But we did Vanity I... Fair. Um, Clifford is in Vanity Fair and in Rolling Stone mm -hmm. and Entertainment Tonight and TV Guide. And there's a couple of things, you know. She's showing up. She's showing up. I got to start collecting these these uh, these periodicals so I can have my little collection. <laughs> yes, you know, we got to have our little scrapbook. I'm not mad at that. When uh, I saw, I will say, when I saw your love scene first, I felt like I was pe like a peeping Tom because we're friends. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> it, I was like, oh, yeah, but I'm like, wait, I, that's my friend. Like, if I was like, I was telling Mike, I was like, I'm feeling uncomfortable, not because of what the scene is, but because that's my friend. Mm -hmm. I think that, that scene made several people kind of uncomfortable for many different reasons. Different reasons. You know? Yeah. yeah th there are some people that were so into it because they've never seen it before. Um, right. Some people were into it because of whatever. I'm not even going to go through the whole list of it. But right. it was it was art. It was art. You know, again, that's one of those things that I say rewatch. Because people are like, oh, I know it was this. And I'm like, no. Nah. My brother, J. Alphonse Nicholson, is a bomb-ass actor. And we have great, great times on set, like, as a cat. Because yeah. we, we still sharpen steel. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? We, yes. play, we, we play no games and, and went through the whole thing of we are going to do this professionally and as authentically as we can. But for me, as an artist, as the actor, if you really watch it, I'm dancing. I'm doing Miss Mississippi's choreography. We are, that's, that's, we're doing the same. So y'all be, I'm like, oh my God, it was this. I'm like, I was just, so look, this, for me, I was just like, oh, no, this is on the six, seven, eight, one. Now everybody really is going to go back and watch it. You I'm should. telling you. You should. And, you know, it, you know, as actors, we're technicians. You know, there are, people don't realize there are other people in the room. Mm -hmm. It's not like yeah. you're in there by yourself. It really is. Everything is done for the camera mm -hmm. and for the good of the storytelling. So there yeah. is no personal. There's nothing personal going on in there. Mm -hmm. You're bringing, you know, your authentic self for the character, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very technical. Yeah. I'm going to answer some of these questions. That sex yes. scene was so powerful. Was Uncle Clifford's perception in the mirror a director's choice or an actor's choice? That was actually a writer's choice. That was written in the script that um, Uncle Clifford is sitting, uh, standing, looking in the aftermath of what just happened. Um, the choice of smoking, Uncle Clifford smoking the blunt and brushing her beard, that was my choice. That was my choice. Um, because I also knew as the character, I was, it, you know, the, the dawn is here. This was nice and fun, but we also, I got to go check on the club. Like, this has been enough. This was a good stress reliever. <laughs> this was yeah. a stress reliever. So you see in the next episode when she says, I kind of got carried away. And he says, yes. oh, I know, I did too. You know, and I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, that's something else. But yeah. We got another question. Um, oh, that scene with Loretta, um, Nico, I saw that, those acting chops. Did you feel she poured into performance? Poured into the performance? Yeah, I think that's what it says. Um, working with Loretta Devine was, uh, a total dream all the way through and through, all the way through and through. Um, I was very, I'm very, when I'm on set 
especially with this character, I am very clear on how I move. So I interact with people either as Uncle Clifford or they know when it's off and it's Nico, right? There's a little difference to the voice um, and the, the, the body just starts to have it. And it kind of comes once I am fully dressed, you know? Um, and even if I take my shoes off for a moment or I have like my robe on or something like that to cover up, um, I can still feel her. But once I have channeled her for the day, you know, she kind of lives. So when I first met Miss Divine, she, I was coming out of my trailer going back to the studio, to the set, and she was leaving a fitting, and she was getting in the uh, van, and they were like, Nico, uh, Loretta's here, Loretta's here. And I was like, well, wait, y'all didn't bring her so I can see her and meet her, you know? And I ran out into the parking lot, and I, I was like, Grey Mother, Grey Mother! <laughs> And she was just looking around like, what, what, what? And anyway, so she stepped out of the van and I came over down, I finally got up to her and I gave her a hug and she was just looking at me like, what is going on? What, what? Uh, you must be Clifford. You must be. <laughs> and she was like, you must be Clifford. And she was looking at me kind of like an alien. You see, I'm looking down at you like this. Yeah. She was and she yeah. was holding my shoulders like this. And she was like, bitch, you pretty. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, who did your makeup? I'm, they need to do my makeup. And I was like, Tara paints. Tara Thomas all day. Tara did my makeup for the entire season and was amazing, is amazing. Um, I want her back. I, I don't want to do Uncle Clifford without her. She is amazing. And Arlene Martin was on my hair. Um, all the looks. So those two women, two black women, um, it was an amazing experience, but that's how it was when I met, uh, we first met Loretta and I, and then we shot like the next day. Um, yeah, the next day we shot and it was just magic. You know, it was, it was hot and we would be sitting in the back porch, that house, the house, like Uncle Clifford's house. Oh, yeah. I, like there's so much, I saw someone on here, they mentioned that they are a film student and that the show is very inspiring. I'm happy to hear that because so many people think that you're supposed to be in front of the camera, but like there's so much, even as an actor, being in the front of the camera, the behind the scenes, man, like that's, ooh, that's the stuff that holds you down. Yes. The set decoration, the costuming, the hair, those are all the things that bring these characters and story to life. So that house, one, what color is on the house? Do you know? You Who should. You, yeah. Oh, the inside of the house or the outside? Mm -mm, the outside. It's pink, right? Yeah, it is. Why are you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. is there no choice? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the moment that you first see the house, that tells you all cinematically the shot is coming in. And what do you see? Pink. You see a yep. pink house with glass bottle trees. That's so country. That's so yeah. country and beautiful and cinematic. And uh, people don't get like the care that has gone that. And the, the, the production design, mm -hmm. Jeff Pratt Gordon, Chef's yeah. kiss. So literally when I was in that house, when Loretta and I were in the house, there was a moment, there was a moment that felt very, very, very scary, Deidre, because it felt like a house in Detroit. Because I was upstairs in my bedroom, in Clifford's bedroom. Yes. Looked, yeah. And I was like, I'm not home, but wait, what, what, what is, they literally to the point where, you know, you can, the, what do they call the things that you used to raise and put the, the clothes, your dirty clothes down and then we we'll go down to the basement? The like the, the shoe. The shoe. It had one of those. It had a shoe? It had a shoe. And so I was like, the, the kid in me totally just came out and I was just like, oh God, I'm here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like it just. I was just like a kid in shit. I was just like, I'm in a house on a set that's like my old house when I was a kid. I'm with this woman who reminded me of my mom. I'm, yes. just, I'm with this legend and I'm getting to play. Thank you, God. 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 It was all praise. That's what that was. What was your favorite outfit? Someone asked the favorite, your favorite outfit that you've worn. I can't do that. <laughs> it's so many. So many. So many, so many. 
Um, I really like I really like the Frida Kahlo, the homage to Frida Kahlo in episode two. Um, because I love how that outfit came together. I love the homage to Frida Kahlo. I love the incorporation of culture. Um, that was it, it, it's really important and lovely to me how a black show, so they say, a black show, um, incorporates so many different cultures. We see all people, you know, so having Uncle Clifford speak Vietnamese, having Uncle Clifford in, uh, incorporate Look, and understand. Me out when you got your nails done and you were speaking Vietnamese, I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that was really real. That was really real. And having conversations with the actors um, that were uh, true Vietnamese actors and they were helping me with the language you know literally on set because of there was with the language you know tone you know yeah. tone it, it changes the meaning of it and like oh you went a little too high and it was just like okay but being able to respect it you know yes and be that technician as you say uh, some, good questions right? yeah. yes which one are you going for the red umbrella. No. <laughs> the parasol. It was the parasol. Yeah. I like that outfit, too. We call that the wind done gone. Not well, gone with the wind, the but the wind group. gone. That should that be was, a meme. I yeah. mean, literally, it when <laughs> when she came out there in, with, the in that field, I said, I'm done. I can't. I said, if, if, how, oh, here's a question. How does it feel to see yourself on television and know people are going to see you? Mm. Is it weird to see yourself on TV? No. Look. Especially, and I'm going to say, especially in this role, because I don't see myself. The first, Somebody... time, the first time I saw Uncle Clifford when we did the pilot, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I was taken aback because... I just knew how she feels. I knew I know what I see when I look in the mirror as Uncle Clifford, um, but I did not see. I don't see all of the things. I didn't. I didn't see the pointing. I didn't see like I knew it. I knew it. I didn't see the nails. I didn't see the way the way she walked away in the field, walking away, talking about what's what's the line. After after she spells P U S S Y V A L L E Y pussy valley baby, and she's tipping over the, the little dirt and stuff, the little shake. I didn't see all. I don't see that in my head. I'm not thinking about any of that. Um, so to see it is just like. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked, "Are you worried about uh, um, this role possibly um, you being typecast after doing this role?" No, yeah, and, and, I, and I say that specifically, I think um, any artist worth their salt can see the layers within the character. And I think that it's nothing even to be tight cast. I don't think that it has been a tight to cast. I think that um, if, uh, I'm gonna say it. If I was playing, let's say, Big Mama, you mm -hmm. know, or if I was playing a, 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 a stereotype of a, a non-binary character person, or if I was just a man in a wig for a joke, then right. the answer to the question would be yes. But that's not what Uncle Clifford is. Hopefully that's what you're getting. <laughs> Who yes, is that man up? Uh... <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hubcat yeah. Man is, is is a uh, it's an independent little it, it was a uh, independent film that we did. Um, it was for what was it a twenty four hour film festival or was it forty eight? I think it was a forty eight hour film festival. So the 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 filmmaker and the writer and director they had to write, direct, and cast that film in forty eight hours, and Hubcat Man came from that. Yeah. People are there, you know, they are getting deep. They are following this. I love your, it. I think that's a part of the me. That's a part of the me, though, Deidre. You know what I'm saying? You can attest to yourself as an actor, you know, in Seattle. How often do you get to work on material that you can really sink your teeth into? Yeah. 
It doesn't happen all the time. And when it does, you feel like you're in, in euphoria. Mm -hmm. So we have a minute and 40 seconds left. I like to do a round robin of questions at the end. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions and then you just shout out what you, your answer. Okay. Everybody, and thank you so much. Thank you everybody who tuned in, who's new to this yeah. platform. Follow me here. Um, I do stuff like this all the time and I'm in support of black and POC artists all the time. Yeah. So potato chips or popcorn? Popcorn with ranch. Okay. My, my cousin got me into that. Like not ranch dressing, but the ranch, like the, if like Hidden Valley Ranch, the actual packet. Yes. Try it on, on hot the popcorn. popcorn. Yeah. Okay. Shoes on in the house or shoes off? Off. Don't bring that wow. dirty in my house. Would you rather go on vacation to a beach or in the mountains? Beach, because I love the water. Uh, slow dancing or dropping it like it's hot? Slow dancing is more intimate. <laughs> 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 Cookies or cake? Cake, 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 cake. I love. Cake, I will go cake, to the grocery cake. store on Monday. That's right, the birthday. Aww. I can't Thank be trusted you. with the whole. You are welcome. That's it. I, All right. I love you. And I love you too. Yeah, thanks for on. taking oh, the time. Da -na -na -na. Da -na -na -na. Da -na -na. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs>